Let's talk a little bit about the models that you've released because it's been interesting how people have been focused on spending a lot of money for AI, but what you're trying to do is making AI work more efficiently. That's correct. I'll give you a bit of a context of our R&D. You know, in the past, past few years, the narrative that has been established is that we need to build bigger models that consume more energy, hence require greater sums of investments in order to have a winner. But I think for the companies such as Sakana AI and many companies like us, we strive to make technologies that make this AI technology a million times faster. Uh, and more efficient. And I think you know this is what's needed for the technology to move forward. Tiny Swallow, for example, is one of those uh, projects that you're putting into actual local devices? Exactly. So Tiny Swallow came out of a technology called a TAID, which is a new model distillation method. Uh, this method allows us to uh, train a very small model that is typically like 100th the size of a very large model, uh, where the model can actually maintain most of its performance. And as a proof of concept, we've shown that the model we train on Japanese data, Tiny Swallow, works entirely inside of a smartphone or entirely inside your web browser without mm. it calling an API. And we th see this the new type of model distillation development as a key trend in 2025 for foundation models. What do you make of the volatility that we saw around Chinese startup DeepSeek and its way of trying to uh, set these AI skills to be cheaper and more uh, efficient? I, mean, I think this is also uh, the trend that we're going to see in the next few years. Uh, you know, the traditional players uh, in, in the West have been trying to scale up the models, uh, get larger investments, and perhaps that may be the, the only winner. That's the established narrative. But with companies like DeepSeek and ourselves, uh, I think the tech, for the technology to move forward, we need this technology to be a thousand times or a million times faster. The analogy I have is the current large language models or AI is kind of like the mainframes of our generation. How, you know, it, at the beginning, you need this large investments to build the mainframe, but ultimately, uh, the technologies that actually, like, uh, everyone uses in five to ten years are like the, the highly optimized versions, like the PCs markets and the mm -hmm. smartphone versions of these mainframes. And, you know, I think, you know, we're going to continue to see many uh, more efficient models around the world, not just in China, hopefully from Japan as well. Can you tell us more about the applications and how you see these smaller scale models being fed into the, the ultimate consumer? Because it sounds like you're saying, you know, ultimately these smaller models are going to be perhaps more applicable on a, you know, real life day to day basis. Well, sure. I think, you know, right now in the last few years, uh, the paradigm we have is you have a bunch of very large models that are served on an API across several vendors. But I think we're just getting started. As I mentioned uh, to Sherry earlier, I think the current LLMs are the main frames of our generation. Uh, future models, there will be many different models. Many will be derived from open source models, such as DeepSeek or Facebook's Llamas models or our own models. And I think organizations and individuals, uh, everyone's going to use a variety of different AI models. I don't think everyone's going to be locked into a single vendor or, you know, like a, there will be particularly like one single winner in AI, which seems to be the, the current uh, narrative for the investors even. Tell us about your partnership with NVIDIA. You've talked about teaming up with NVIDIA when it comes to research and uh, access to data center technology and the such, and also your plans for further fundraising. Great. NVIDIA is one of our key investors in our Series A. Uh, we have a great partnership with NVIDIA. We have a R&D collaboration, so we work together on leveraging our AI technology, in particular using AI for AI development itself, uh, for scientific discovery, for AI discovery. Uh, for data center testing, you know, as you know, uh, there's in Japan, there are plans for large data center developments here. Uh, NVIDIA is a key player in that space, and we work closely with NVIDIA uh, to develop the AI data centers here uh, in terms of testing, in terms of deploying technology, and also to make AI more efficient for those data centers. Lastly, is for community development. We work closely with NVIDIA to try to uh, encourage a thriving AI ecosystem in Japan so that like, this technology, this system, core technology is also developed in Japan, uh, not just in you know, the US or in China, for instance. And just to reiterate Heidi's question, do you have any more plans for fundraising? 
Well, I think you know fundraising is always an option for us, but I think right now you know we are actually in a very healthy state after our Series A. So we're actually focused on building the technology at the moment. When you talked about Nvidia earlier, for example, are there any concerns that we have seen their stock take a big hit, Magnificent Seven stocks take a big hit because of these cheaper models? Is it uh, feasible to think that they could actually uh, get more pressure if we see these, as you say, smaller versions of AIs working more efficiently? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, f well, I cannot predict the future, but I would say that uh, even these more efficient models coming out of DeepSeek or Sakana AI or other companies, that's just going to uh, increase the demand for GPUs and compute. Uh, it's just like the users of those compute will be different. Uh, I would say that you know there will be many more users around the world for DeepSeek models or Sakana AI models, and perhaps the demand side would coming from the inference side rather than the training side. Uh, but I would say that you know there's going to be more and more demand for compute. Uh, so I, I think you know Nvidia is in a very good position to capture this uh, increasing demand, especially from a global audience.